everyone. Here we are, the two of us. It's tutorial time on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, right, the tutorial song today is one that's very, very popular um, around the clubs, and they've all got their own different, <laughs> um, different varying versions of them. Uh, and it's Dream a Little Dream of Me. Um, the song goes back a lot further than you might think. It was written in 1931. Um, so 90 years ago, crikey, and it was written, the lyrics were written by a great American lyricist named Gus Kahn, who wrote a lot with uh, a composer named Walter Donaldson, um, and, one of the, and also um, Isham Jones, who wrote the music for I'll See You In My Dreams, which is another of Gus Kahn's lyrics. Um, the composers for Dream a Little Dream of Me were two American co-composers named Fabian Andre and Wilbur Schwant. So now you know. It's been, well, it's been recorded, it's become a standard. It's been recorded more than, by more than 50 different artists. Uh, Doris Day revived it in the 50s, in about 1956. Uh, and it was a big hit for her. Then the Mamas and Papas revived it in the 60 with, 60s with Mama Cass on lead vocals. Our own fragrant Anita Harris uh, did a rather nice version of it in the 60s as well. Um, and uh, for the most part, they do this in the key of C or D. Uh, we're doing it in C. Um, now, as I say, you've probably seen a version of this on various club songbooks and elsewhere, but um, I've put a little, a couple of little embellishments in it just to give it a bit of zhuzh and um, also to give your fingers a workout. So be warned, um, it's not difficult, but it's not for the faint-hearted. Is that a fair assessment? Pam? Yeah, I think you put them in just to keep me on my toes. <laughs> She knows me very well. Mm. Okay, let's get into this. The introduction is four chords repeated and it is the first four chords of the verse. And they themselves uh, present a few challenges uh, for the unwary uh, ukulele player, especially those of you who may be just setting out on your ukulele journey. It starts on a C, okay, Yay. no problem there. And then it all goes kind of downhill because the, the four chords that are repeated uh, for the introduction are C, B seventh, A flat, and G. Well, the G doesn't get repeated. No, the G doesn't get repeated. The G turns itself into a G seventh while no one's looking. But anyway, um, it starts with a C. Now, okay, if you want to play that C, by all means, go ahead. But it, it seems to work better if you play the C as 5, 4, 3, 3 by flattening your index fring, finger across the third fret of the A and E strings and then your middle finger on the fourth fret of the C string and your ring finger on the fifth fret of the G string. So, now the reason that I play it there it's because from there I'm going to a B seventh. Now you've got two ways of playing a B seventh. You can either, if you're from there, you can just lift that index finger and slide the whole thing down one fret, which gives you that open B seventh. So that makes your life a little easier. So if you're from there. Or if you prefer the B seventh as two three two two with a four string bar on the second fret, and then your middle finger on the third fret of the C string, which is quite a nice voicing for the B uh, for the B seventh, especially with the low G uh, uke that I'm using because the seventh note is the A and it comes in right down below. Either way you choose to do it, remember that where you're going next is an A-flat. Now an A-flat chord causes all sorts of trouble to all sorts of people. And we've said this before, but really there is a way to play it that I find the easiest. And it's to play a four string bar on the third fret and then play an F shape. So if you play your F 
with those two fingers, the middle and ring fingers, like so. F. Slide that up three frets and put your index finger down on the third fret. So, so we've got an A flat and I, I find that the, by far and away the, the easiest and most comfortable way of playing uh, an A flat chord. And in this uh, in this song, we've got an advantage here because the first time round we're going from an A flat to a G. Now it's a closely guarded secret that that A flat you can just slide down a fret and you've got a G. Simples. It really is that simple. So you, in, instead of worrying about going from there to there to get your G to get your you know a zero a two three two shape. Just slide the whole thing down, so you get uh, four two three two instead of zero two three two. But it's perfectly valid voicing of a G chord. So, how about that? We've got a B seventh and an A flat, and they're actually a lot easier than some people think. So we get uh, we get a C, um, A flat. Again, C, D, 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 A flat. Then we're going to a G seventh. Right. Okay. Well, there. You can play the G. You can always play the root chord where a seventh is is called for. So you can carry on with the plain G chord if you want, or you can go to there to your zero two one two for the uh, G chord, the first the G seventh that you first learn, or you can play it up there, four, five, three, five. Which again is a nice voicing for a G7 and one I use quite a lot. And if you're going from A flat, it's a complete change of hand position, but it's worth, worth having a little go at. See, you might get on with it. Okay, so we've, uh, oh crikey, we better press on. Yes. Um, so that's the introduction. And it's also the first line of the verse. It's stars shining bright above you. Um, and then we get into the first little embellishment I've put in. Uh, because the second line it is night breezes seem to whisper I love you. Right. Uh, before we get to that. So night breezes, C, E7, and then A7, plain A7. But if you listen to the melody, it goes It goes to that sharpened A. So, if you're playing that A7, and you want to sharpen that and pick up that little melody, just turn it into a G diminished by putting whichever finger you have handy on the first fret of the A string. It's, I'm calling it a G diminished on the song sheet because that's what everybody recognises that um, position as, a zero, zero, 0101. Zero, one. In musical terms, it's actually an A seventh augmented. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. No, it's an A seventh with a flattened ninth. But I thought that might confuse people if I showed it as A7 flat nine. So I showed it as a D, G diminished and it's exactly the same fingering, same notes. So that uh, second line goes, night breezes to whisper I love. So it's just that, just one little embellishment that goes in. Um, the third line of the verse, birds singing in the sycamore tree. Um, right, starts on an F6. Uh, right, F6 you can play as D minor. Or you can play it as a four string bar across all four strings on the fifth fret. And that's F6 as well. In here, we're going from an F6 to an F minor. Right. Okay. Now, your, all your chord books <coughs> will show F minor 
as 1013. And by all means play it like that if that's what you're used to. Now after that F minor we're going to throw a cheeky little F minor 6 in again just as a little embellishment and we do that by putting the ring finger down on the second fret of the C string. So F minor is 1013, F minor 6 is 1213. And again, you just put that on and then take it off again. So we get um, birds singing in the sycamore tree. So we get that. We get the C and the D note in there. And then the last line of the verse is again, we've got a dream, a little A flat, dream of, to a G, uh, sorry, uh, that's the, uh, it's slightly different from what I just did, so ignore my last, it's dream, a little dream of me, and then back to the second verse. Now, that, um, that third line, the birds singing in the sycamore trees, you can play that, play it like that. Or, if you want to play your F6 up here, and you can play your F minor, uh, I'll show you how to construct this, play your ordinary E minor as uh, 0, 4, 3, 2. Complete it to make it a four string chord by moving your ring finger over to the fourth fret of the G string and drop your little finger in where your ring finger has just vacated. So that's a full four string E minor. Slide it up one fret and lo and behold you've got another voicing of F minor. And from there, if you want to put that sixth on, um, you flatten your ring finger across strings G and C, the lower two strings, which leaves your ring, uh, your middle, little, little finger, finger free to put the sixth note down on the fifth fret of the A string. So we go. So that's a different voicing for F minor and F minor sixth. And then we finish off the verse A flat B, A flat B, seventh. Say nine, nine. And then we're into the second verse, which again is exactly the same as the first. Okay, now we get into the middle eight. Mm -hmm. Where's the bomb bit? The bridge. Yeah. It's often where you find the most musically interesting part of a song in the bridge. Because uh, verses tend to be reasonably straightforward most of the time. There are exceptions. And this bridge, this um, goes into the key of A major from C, which is a nice modulation, nice key change. And it gets there uh, using E7 as a transiting chord. So we get at the end of the second verse, dream a little dream of, so that A flat, C, E, 7th, stars fading, okay, now we've got uh, stars fading, F sharp minor 7th, which is just drop your ring finger on the 2nd fret of the E string to turn your A into F sharp minor, then we go into a B minor, which is 4, 2, 2, 2, you can play it as a B minor 7th here, which is just 2 2 2 2, if you want to, but it sounds nicer if you make it the, the full minor chord. Um, and then we get to an E ninth. Now we've come across this uh, in quite recently in tutorials. It's 1 2 2 2. And again, if you analyse that, it's an E 7th, which is 1 2 0 2 completely filled in to put the F sharp note in which is the uh, the ninth so we get one two 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 as E ninth uh, so we get stars fading but I linger on here 
that sort of same shape is repeated an A to an F sharp minor to a B minor and then instead of the E ninth again I'm just throwing in a little embellishment but this one might take a little bit of practice because it's an E seventh but you're adding the C sharp note by putting your little finger on the fourth fret of the A string. So double fret the A string. So play the E7 as you normally would, because your fingers know to go there. And then your, li your little finger goes on there. And then it comes off to resolve to a plain E7. So we get A, F sharp minor, B minor, nice it, and to say it's a little embellishment that really lifts the whole performance of the thing and if everybody else in the club is playing the bog standard chords and you put these little embellishments in you will they will gaze at you in open mouthed wonder <laughs> or something <laughs> something yeah right and that's the first line of the bridge the second line is we're still on that a f sharp minor b minor no, uh, form, but it changes to a B minor seventh mm -hmm. again just to keep things moving in the bass. So we get I'm to linger till dawn. Yeah. Playing E seventh, and now we've got to transit our way back to the key of C. And we the way we do that, uh, or the way this song does that, is um, Again, it will stop and make you think. We, we're doing the A to an F sharp minor. Just saying. And then where do we go? Well, I'll tell you where we go. We go to an A flat major seventh. Do not despair. It's <coughs> not as complicated as you might think. It's one, three, three, three. And you can play it like that. Or you might find it easier to bar the first fret with your index finger and to bar th a three string bar of the A, E and C strings using another finger, either your ring finger or your little finger, whichever is more comfortable for you. And so you might have to practice this because um, if you haven't developed the strength in your little finger yet, you might find a three string bar with your little finger quite hard work. So you'll need to, you'll probably need to practice at that. I certainly do. Uh, that doesn't come naturally to I me. I use my ring finger. Pam uses her ring finger because she's got more strength in her ring finger than her little finger. Whichever works for you, have a go, try it. Um, and it will it play in that chord will also help to build up the strength uh, in your fingers. Do you want to mention what B minor seventh? B it's just in case people don't. Oh, if, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's just um, two, 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 two. A, a brace of Desmonds, if you like. Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> right. Sorry. Um, we're getting to to the end of the bridge and going back into the verse. So we've got that A flat major seventh. So it's A, F sharp minor, A flat major seventh. Nice, isn't it? Lovely chord. And then to a G seventh. And then we're back to C for the last verse. Sweet dreams till some dreams find you. And that is the third verse. Uh, is exactly the same as the as the first. Of the sorry is the se second. second verse without the E seven on the end, but you need to put the E seven in the end on the end if you're going to repeat the bridge, which extends the song a bit. So many songs do two verses bridge, third verse bridge, third verse, and that's the structure that most recordings of this song follow. When you get to the end, well. Um, Anita Harris's version, Mama Cass's version, Doris Day's version, they all fade away. Um, and the fade is on the introduction chords, which is the first four chords uh, of the verse, the, that C, B seventh, A flat, G. So we just get that in a cycle. Uh, 
um, with people going ah, sort of um, that kind of thing. Well, if you want to play that, that starts on the G, which is the the tenth fret of the A string, and then. Which is just nice, you can play that a couple of times, playing around with it, or you can la 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 and all sorts, but make sure you do finish <laughs> definitively. There's nothing worse than trying to fade a song, especially when you're performing it live. And you usually come to a fairly abrupt ending, and that's what's going to happen on this song. You're going to end on a C6. So you think, hurrah, great, C6, I know that, it's just that. Four zeros. Well, you can play it as that, and if some of you are happy to do that, then why not? But if you want to play a, a different C6 to finish on, suggest 5757. Seven. And you can play that as either like that, or as a bar on the fifth fret, there you go. And that's a nice voicing of C6. And it's a nice way to finish the song uh, because it finishes finishing on a nice high note. Okay, well, I think that is pretty much everything. It is, it? yeah. Good. I rely on Pam to make sure that to tell, to tell me if I've missed anything out. But that's about it. As I say, it's a very popular song. Um, very common in ukulele songbooks, club songbooks and, and those around. But this version just has one or two little tweaks and embellishments to add a little more interest to your playing of the song. I hope you have fun with it. We'll be putting out a play-along version uh, in a few days' time at the weekend. And um, uh, with um, the news yesterday that lockdown is not completely being eased, uh, on Monday the 21st of June. We're going to continue with these tutorials for a few more weeks yet, maybe until uh, the 19th of July, which is, let's hope, when we're going to be finally free of this, these restrictions. Okay, so, and we're going to be doing the comic songs as well, so there's another comic song to look out for on Friday, and so on for another three or four weeks, we reckon. But... That's it from us for today. So uh, we'll leave you to go. We're going to go and sit in the sunshine um, and you can do something equally nice, I'm sure. So that's it from us. Yep. So uh, until we meet again, you know what to do. Stay safe, be kind to yourselves, be nice to each other and don't blow it. <laughs> uh, so it's goodbye from Pam. Bye. And it's goodbye from me. Bye bye. See you soon. <laughs>